Today I want to talk to you about a few 3D prints that I've made just to make life easier around the workshop. Plastic in the woodshop. Things just to make life a little bit easier and do things I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Let's take a look. The zinker fence on my drill press has been very handy, but unfortunately sometimes it's just a little bit too tall and gets in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that and I'm going to replace it with a small fence made with some of this leftover Craig Precision Track Stop System. So that's the new fence finished. You can see it's a lot shorter than the old one and is a lot less likely to get fouled by the handles. At the back you can see a bit of an unusual little screw. I've made these myself just out of plastic with a 5 16 nut at the bottom. Yeah, you can see there, basically it's just a hexagonal tube with a grip on it that is put printed out in the 3D printer. And the reason I've used those is to replace these little T-nuts, which are basically you know, 5 16 nut at the bottom with a plastic handle. And the reason I wanted to replace them is to allow me to get the handle closer to the fence and therefore in turn the fence further backwards. Here, I'll show you what I mean. You can see where I've got the new handle here, I've got it right up next to the fence, but in the background behind it, if I just shift over a bit, you can see there's another hole, and that's where the hole would need to be in order to use the T-nut. Hence, the captive nut underneath needs to be set further back, so you can't slide it back quite as far in the channel. So yeah, that's why I've made these. I also printed up this little end stop which fits over the fence. You can see this little 90 degree piece in the corner here fits snugly in the cutout in the front of the fence so that helps it slide along nice and evenly. So all we do is we just pop the T-nut in, pop the printed fence over the edge like so and that's it. That's locked in place nice and tight there. Lock that one in place as well. I was concerned at first that perhaps these wouldn't be strong enough, but they have been. They've proven to be quite strong. Uh, they're PLA plastic, so uh, again, it's you'd think you'd need ABS or something, but no, these have been working beautifully. Okay, moving on. This is a little box I built to act as an adapter for attaching three vacuum hoses, the two inputs and the one output, or outgoing I guess. These are the parts for the actual hoses to attach to. Unfortunately, the printer spat the dummy part way up. These were meant to be a fair bit longer. Oh well, say la vie. So here we go, we're just gonna fit the thing together now. A little lid that sits on top and screws down. I've got a nice set of drawers on the front of my router table for storage of bits and other accessories. And within those drawers, I had the router bits organized in a number of ways. Uh, you can see these are the sorts of ways here. Uh, the original boxes, the router bits came in, be they the little plastic ones, or in the case of a set, this is quite a nice big wooden box. And it was because of the, I liked the box that I kept them in there for so long. Uh, and then on my, some of my other bits, which didn't come in such nice packaging, were stored in these trays, which Beautifully clipped together, the little uh, dovetail slot there, 
and uh, you could hold your, your half inch or 12.7 mil bits and your quarter inch bits in it, uh, well in each one, but I just couldn't buy them anymore so uh, I wasn't able to finish using them plus they weren't the right fit for the size of my drawer. So keeping those in mind and wanting to expand the storage in the drawer I printed up my own. So I printed out four plastic trays. Uh, each of them are 130, sorry, 130 millimetres that way by 120 millimetres that way, almost square. But uh, this just gave me the, the fit I needed between the walls, and the extra 10 mil from side to side. And then I've got them arranged in the case of these two here. I've got them arranged in four by four grids or 16 to a block. And then on this one for the larger bits, I've spread them a bit further out so they can fit the large bits in the holes and you can see that's a 3x3 three three, or you probably could if I took a couple of bits out. There we go, if I take those out you can see we've got a 3x3 three three here. And then for my smaller bits, my quarter inch bits, I've done a 5x5 five five, which is a 25 uh, board. And at the moment that holds most of my bits. I still have some other specialty bits like uh, bits for doing dovetails and so on uh, in jigs and things like that. Uh, raised panel bits and stuff are still kept separate. But for my everyday bits, this is now going to be a lot easier for me to get at them. I've got them nice and laid out in groups too so I can find what I'm looking for. Before if I wanted a straight bit I might have to look in one box for one and then saying, oh no, it's not in this box, I'll go and look there for the other. Now, all my straight bits, all right there. Or <laughs> there, beautiful. All my bearing bits are all together. Lovely, nice and neat. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully that's been of some help. As always, I will put the 3D prints onto Thingiverse for you to download if you should want them. Other than that, have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.